Hi, I'm Tam. And I'm Bobby. And welcome to our adventures. Good morning. It's day 106. We are in Subic Bay in the Philippines. And Tam is off with Alyssa going to a hot springs and lead bath, the 4x4 excursion. I decided not to go. I figured something out, but right now I have breakfast and we're going to go eat coffees. Here's uh, Civic Bay. It's pretty. It's like a military base. All right, we're off the ship in Civic Bay. Got some Filipino money. We're looking for either the shuttle, free shuttle, or a taxi to go into town. That's what we're doing. We're on a bus. We think it's the free shuttle to the shops. Let's see. So we got Halo Halo and Doce Les Cheese. Halo Halo. Morning, it's day 107. We are left Philippines and we're heading to Hong Kong, which will be tomorrow. Which ends this has been a fun week here with the most amazing table. <laughs> most amazing table. <laughs> most amazing table. <laughs> Somebody's hidden there, but that's okay. We kind of know who they are. Thank you all. Enjoyed having dinner with y'all. Thank you. <laughs> That was dinner. Good morning, it's day 108. We are in Hong Kong, so um, I'm not really able to post any social media stuff because like TikTok's banned in Hong Kong, YouTube is banned. Um, Facebook, Instagram are all banned, so we're kind of gone silent. Uh, I'm still recording this. It'll eventually get onto YouTube once we leave China. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what the, what we're at. So um, Alyssa gets off at seven. Alyssa, uh, Lisa gets off at seven thirty. <laughs> we're not sure if we're getting off with Alyssa or uh, just seeing her off and then getting off later. We're planning to do a hop on hop off bus today. Uh, possibly look for wigs. That's our plan. All right, we're off the ship in Hong Kong for the day see what we're going to go do. Got off with Lisa. We're getting an Uber. We pick up the hop on hop on bus. 
The Causeway Bay Shelter was the first in Hong Kong, originally built in 1883 on the site of the present-day Victoria Park. The shelter was moved here after land reclamation in the 1950s. The white building situated on the edge of the Typhoon Shelter is home to the Royal Hong Kong Yacht Club. Every day at precisely 12 noon, a cannon shot rings out from Causeway Bay Typhoon Shelter across Victoria Harbour. The origins of this tradition are somewhat obscure. One story suggests that in the 1860s, the Jardine Company, which specialised in import and export, welcomed their visiting officials with a gun salute. The British Royal Navy apparently took offence at this, as such welcomes should have been reserved only for government officials. They ordered Jardines to give a cannon shot daily as a time signal instead. Jardines still honour this custom, which is known as the noonday gun. The truth is probably more practical. In the mid-19th century, navigation relied on accurate timekeeping. Vessels from all over the empire would consequently set their time by the noonday gun. We are now on Gloucester Road, one of the busiest thoroughfares in Hong Kong. This road links the Cross Harbour Tunnel, the most popular route between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island, with the business district of Central. The grey building coming up on the left is Wan Chai Police Station. Built in the 1930s, it is typical of many buildings of the era, with columns and balconies designed to keep occupants cool in the tropical heat of summer. Coming up on the right is Central Plaza, Hong Kong's third tallest building. This prime commercial land was acquired by developers in 1989 at a price of 5 million Hong Kong dollars per square meter. Just 44 months later, the tower was complete. Its triangular floor plan ensures fine harbour views for the majority of the offices within. A 75th floor, at the very top, is home to the Hong Kong City Church. There is no sales tax here, so retail prices are very reasonable and if you are prepared to bargain, it is possible to negotiate even better deals, except perhaps in department stores or at designer outlets. From malls to markets, and exclusive boutiques to traditional Chinese shops, Hong Kong offers shopping to suit all tastes. Ahead of us on the right is the rather unusual building that is now a Hong Kong base of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. It is the headquarters garrison for the army in Hong Kong. It was built in 1979 as part of HMS Tamar by the British and also acted as their headquarters until the handover on the 1st of July 1997. Chinese soldiers stationed here are not allowed to leave the barracks, even on their time off. The building is still known to many by its former name of the Prince of Wales Building, or more informally as the Upside Down Gin Bottle, due to its unusual inverted shape. The tall building with the chequered design is the Bank of China building, one of the most distinctive skyscrapers in Hong Kong. Some practitioners of Feng Shui have criticised the design of this tower for its many X shapes and sharp edges, which are said to symbolise negativity. There is a public viewing gallery on the 43rd floor, which gives incredible panoramic views of Hong Kong and the Kowloon Peninsula. It was designed by the Chinese-born American architect I.M. Pei and was completed in 1990. The job held some emotional significance for Pei, as his father was the first manager of the Hong Kong branch of the Bank of China in the Nationalist era. A short walk up the hill to the left, you can find Hong Kong Park, featuring a fine blend of modern design and natural landscaping. Within the park is Flagstaff House, built in 1846, the oldest surviving colonial building in Hong Kong. Formerly home to the commander of the British forces, it now houses the Museum of Teaware, which, alongside its collection of antiques, promotes Chinese ceramic art and tea drinking culture. Starting in Central District, the tram runs through the mid-levels to Victoria Peak 
at an improbable gradient. It offers unrivaled views over the harbour and skyscrapers of Hong Kong. It opened for public service in May 1888 and helped to accelerate the residential development of Victoria Peak and the mid-levels. The tram covers a distance of 1.4 kilometres and has four intermediate stations. A ride on the peak tram is an essential part of any visit to Hong Kong and is experienced by more than 4 million people annually. To the left is St. John's Anglican Cathedral. Built in 1847, it is the oldest Anglican church in the Far East. The headquarters of the bank have stood on this same spot since its foundation in 1865. Designed by British architect Sir Norman Foster in 1985, at the time of its construction it was the world's most expensive building. At the front of the building, through the passageway, there are two magnificent bronze lions guarding the entrance. They are named Stephen and Stitt, after two general managers of the Hong Kong and Shanghai branches of the bank. During the occupation of Hong Kong in the Second World War, the Japanese used these lions as target practice. Today they still bear the bullet marks. The building is often known affectionately as the robot. All of the leading brands and boutiques can be found here. If you look around, you will see many designer shops offering some of the most exclusive shopping in Hong Kong and indeed the world. The locals are very passionate about their luxury goods, with many businessmen proud to display their Rolex watches, Mont Blanc pens, Dunhill wallets and Prada shoes as evidence of their successful careers in Hong Kong. A Symphony of Lights is an orchestrated light and laser show featured on buildings situated on both sides of the Victoria Harbour. It is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest permanent light and sound show. The show commences every night at 8pm, weather permitting, with the best vantage points at the Avenue of Stars in Sim Chao Toi, outside the Expo Center in Wan Chai, or from the sightseeing ferries out on the harbour. <laughs> having a great time in the look over. Look who it is. What are you doing? To Kowloon. The tallest building in Hong Kong, the International Commerce Centre, can be seen across the water on the Kowloon Peninsula. It was completed in 2010, when it became the fourth tallest building in the world. The two black office towers coming up on the left are government buildings, housing the immigration and taxation departments respectively. The Wan Chai Tower, which stands between them, houses the district court and local government offices. We are entering Happy Valley, the home of the famous racecourse, which is coming up on the left. Land in Hong Kong is a very valuable commodity. So the large amount of prime land set aside here for horse racing is a testament to the Hong Kong people's passion for this sport. Coming up on the right will be the Happy Valley Eurasian Cemetery. Here you can see hundreds of grave plots lining the hillside. The first person to be buried here was Captain William Brodie of HMS Rattlesnake in June 1841. We are about to enter the 1.9 kilometer Aberdeen Tunnel coming up ahead of us. The tunnel opened in 1982 and is used by an average of 60,000 vehicles per day. It reduces the journey time to the southern side of the island by approximately 20 minutes. We have now arrived on the south side of Hong Kong Island. Ahead of us is Ocean Park, Hong Kong's most popular theme park. Apart from the renowned roller coaster rides, the park also features the Grand Aquarium, Symbio, the world's first 360 degree water screen laser show, a giant panda habitat, and the Ocean Theatre, where dolphin and sea lion shows take place. Perhaps the most memorable part of any visit to Ocean Park is the dramatic scenic journey on the gondola cable car that links the two halves of the park. The coast road we now follow hugs the steep shoreline all the way down to the village of Stanley. 
Stanley was named after Edward Henry Stanley, 15th Earl of Derby, and Secretary of State for the Colonies at the time of Hong Kong's acquisition in 1841. Please have your cameras ready for magnificent views across the South China Sea. The road is narrow in places with many twists and turns. We are now entering Deep Water Bay. The beach here is popular due to its proximity to the urban areas of Hong Kong. On sunny weekend days, there are often large numbers of people enjoying the sea and sand and making use of the barbecue facilities. Hong Kong has a long coastline, full of twists and turns with many bays and beaches. The majority of beaches are suitable for swimming. Some of the best to visit include Repulse Bay, Deepwater Bay, Stanley Main Beach and St. Stephen's Beach. Chinese tea is very likely to be served with your meal. When the waiter pours the tea, you thank him by gently tapping your middle and index fingers on the table twice. This particular two-fingered gesture is representative of a gracious bow, reminiscent of Japanese culture. When pouring tea, it is polite to serve the most senior person at the table first and leave your own cup until last. If you need the teapot refilled, simply take the lid off the pot and rest it on the handle to advise the waiter. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, the area now known as Repulse Bay used to be a hideaway for pirates. All manner of cutthroat bandits would ply the South China Sea, stealing precious cargo from ships from all over the world. By the 1840s, piracy began to seriously affect British trade routes with the Orient, and became such a threat that the British Royal Navy attacked the pirate bases and drove off a series of counterattacks, thus repulsing the pirates and destroying their bases on the island and this is how it got its name. The climate of Hong Kong is a monsoon-influenced, humid, subtropical climate, just short of being a tropical, wet and dry climate. It has four distinct seasons. Temperatures range from 34 degrees Celsius in the summer, with 80% humidity, to 15 degrees Celsius in the winter. From June to September is the monsoon season, at which time Hong Kong may be hit by typhoons. So if you are out and about during the day, make sure you remember your sun protection and an umbrella. We will shortly begin our winding descent onto the Stanley Peninsula. Stanley is a charming seaside town, which has achieved popularity because of its famous market, but it offers many more, less well-known attractions, making it an enjoyable and interesting place to visit. The market has become one of the best known in Hong Kong, and a firm favourite with visitors. There are many shops and stalls selling traditional clothing, sportswear, jewellery, Chinese crafts and souvenirs. The atmosphere in the market is relaxed and visitors are free to browse the shops without harassment. Most goods have prices marked, although discounts can sometimes be negotiated, especially if buying several items. By the beginning of the 19th century, the British Empire had become heavily dependent upon imports of tea from China, with large amounts of illegal opium being exported the other way. Addiction swept China like wildfire, and sales of what the Chinese called foreign mud grew very rapidly. In 1839, the Chinese expressed the state's opposition to the unlawful opium trade to Queen Victoria. The Chinese official, Lin Zhezu, was ordered to stamp out the trade once and for all. He surrounded the British garrison in Guangzhou, cut off the food supply, and ordered all opium to be surrendered. The British held out for six weeks, before being ordered by Captain Charles Elliot to turn over more than 20,000 chests of the drug. Lin then publicly burnt almost half a ton of opium. The first opium war began in June 1840, when British forces besieged Guangzhou, blockaded ports and, to the Emperor's great concern, threatened Peking. Following negotiations, the two sides reached an agreement. In exchange for the British withdrawal from northern China, Hong Kong Island would be ceded to Britain. British sailors named the island Hong Kong after the Cantonese for Fragrant Harbour. The island officially became a British possession on the 26th of June, 1843, and its first governor, Sir Henry Pottinger, 
lost no time in declaring that it would soon be awash with the riches of commerce. The Second Opium War broke out in 1856, when Chinese soldiers boarded a British merchant schooner. The war lasted two years, and ended with the signing of a treaty that ceded the Kowloon Peninsula, giving Britain total control over Victoria Harbour. Within 40 years, Hong Kong's population had tripled, and in 1898, Britain agreed to sign a 99-year lease for the new territories and 235 surrounding islands, increasing the colony's size by 90%. The lease commenced on the 1st of July 1898 and ended at midnight on the 30th of June 1997. On the 7th of December 1941, the military might of the Japanese forces invaded Hong Kong from the north. British, Chinese, Canadian and Indian forces held out for just over two weeks before surrendering at the Peninsula Hotel on the 25th of December 1941. This became known to local people as Black Christmas. The population that numbered 1.6 million in 1941 had decreased to little more than 600,000 by the end of the war. Today, Kowloon alone is home to 2.1 million people. Here on the picturesque south side of Hong Kong Island, the demand for property is high and prices reflect this. Residents are attracted to this area by fine sea views, easy access to beaches and hiking trails, and the relaxed atmosphere of the coastal towns. All of this a mere 30 minutes journey from the central business district of the city. House prices in this area are matched only by those on Victoria Peak. One of the most distinctive buildings in southern Hong Kong is the curved building in Repulse Bay. The site was once home to apartments which housed British military officers, but was purchased for development in 1997 at a cost of 5.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. The design of the building is representative of a lily and ensures optimum sea views for its occupants. Properties in Repulse Bay are frequently valued at more than 20,000 Hong Kong dollars per square foot. Dim sum is the name of the Chinese cuisine involving a light meal served with Chinese tea. This cuisine consists of a wide spectrum of choices with combinations of meat, seafood and vegetables, together with desserts and fruit. The various items are often served in a steamer basket or on a small plate. The Cantonese phrase dim sum means literally, touch the heart. At a Chinese meal, everyone will usually get an individual bowl of rice. It is quite acceptable to hold the bowl close to your mouth and shovel the contents into it using chopsticks or a Chinese spoon. Very experienced users of chopsticks can be seen using the square edges in a scissor-like fashion to cut through very long noodles, whilst others will spear their food with a solitary chopstick and nibble around the edges. All of these are acceptable at the dining table. Visitors unaccustomed to Chinese dining etiquette are well advised to take just a minute or two to glance around the restaurant and discreetly observe the techniques employed by other diners before commencing their meal. The town is named after the former British Prime Minister George Hamilton Gordon, 4th Earl of Aberdeen, but in Cantonese is called Hyung Gong Tsai or Little Hong Kong. Hong Kong's English name is derived from two Chinese characters, Heung and Gong, usually translated as Fragrant Harbour. Some believe this name originates from the export of incense, the main trade in this settlement during pre-colonial days. Aberdeen's harbour, once filled with hundreds of fishing craft, is still home to hundreds of people living on Chinese junks. Their traditional lifestyles are a dramatic contrast to the modern high-rise living that surrounds them. Situated on the harbour, the highly decorated Jumbo Kingdom floating seafood restaurant is a renowned attraction. The many hundreds of daily visitors are ferried across the harbour in motor launches from one of the restaurant's two piers. Aberdeen is famous for its fishing junks, and since the 1960s, the government has developed the area as a tourist destination. Many of the boats are shrimp boats, using the trawl method to catch the ever-popular Chinese delicacy. 
To prevent overfishing, the harbour closes each year, under the fishing moratorium period between June and July, and the boats can then be seen moored in the Typhoon Harbour. Bicycles are generally the preferred mode of transport on the island, as there are no cars. The harbourside restaurants on Lama make ideal places to enjoy fine Cantonese seafood dishes as the sun sets across the South China Sea. Ferries depart regularly throughout the day from Central to both of the island's main settlements. The journey takes around 45 minutes. The three distinctive chimneys at the north end of the island belong to the power station operated by Hong Kong Electric. The company supplies the majority of Hong Kong Island's electricity and prides itself on having maintained a supply reliability rating of 99.99% for more than 10 years. This settlement is one of the oldest in Hong Kong, believed to have existed here since the beginning of the 17th century. It was in this area that Hong Kong's emblem, the Bohemia Blegana flower, was discovered in 1880. The flower has pride of place on the flag of Hong Kong. To the right is the Queen Mary Hospital, which opened in 1937. With some 1,400 beds, it serves the population of the southern and western districts of Hong Kong Island. It is also the flagship teaching hospital of the University of Hong Kong. On the left is the large area occupied by Pok Fu Lam Christian Cemetery. In Chinese culture, it is traditional to visit the graves of one's ancestors to pay respects. This is very evident during the festival in April known as Qing Ming, where grave cleaning is the order of the day, followed by a little ancestor worship. The practice, although compliant with Confucian tradition, has no formal basis in Christian theology, but despite that, families are still seen at the Qing Ming festival, lovingly tending to the family plot. The lack of ground space has shaped the way Hong Kong is today. The boundaries, already set by high surrounding hills and the harbour, have meant that development can go only one way, upwards. Buildings stretch ever upwards in an attempt to gain clear views of the harbour. This means that, along with the buildings shooting up, so do the prices. To the left are the outlying island's ferry piers. Hong Kong has 236 outlying islands surrounding the mainland, New Territories and Kowloon. Less well served with transport links than the rest of Hong Kong, most of these islands have been slower to develop, are sparsely inhabited and are largely rural, making them popular weekend destinations for the city dweller, seeking a more peaceful location for rest and relaxation. We are on the Hong Kong Eye, or Observation Veil as they call it. back over to the other side, away from Good morning, it's day 109. We are still in Hong Kong. Kind of hazy and overcast, but otherwise a good day. It's warmer a little than yesterday. And then uh, we're going to go shopping today looking for wigs and a mic and some glue. That's kind of our plans. Oh, yeah. Yesterday was cold. Right. We're off the ship, day two in Hong Kong. Shopping day. On the free shuttle bus to the mall. 
It's a three-seater split between the two of us. It just about fits. What about three feet? I like the one. In our blooper. Quick searching part three. <laughs> 